Oh, Papa was a rolling stone. We got one of those right here. Welcome back to CBS Morning. Mornings, more than 50 years ago at just 21 years old. What were you doing at 21? Jan Winter co-founded a small music publication in San Francisco. It was called Rolling Stone. You heard of it? Yeah, you have. The magazine quickly became one of the most respected and widely read in America. It has published more than, look at these covers, published more than 1,500 issues covering and shaping music, politics, and pop culture. Now, with his new memoir, it's called Like a Rolling Stone. Where'd you get that title, Jan Winner? He's sharing a very intimate look at his own life and its many ups and downs. He writes about his private and family life and close relationships and friendships with the likes of the Beatles, Mick Jagger, Bob Dylan, Yoko Ono, Bette Midler, just to name a few. Jan Winner joins us now here at the table. I'm so glad to see you. Listen, the book is close to 600 pages. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, it reads so much like a, a movie that I thought we were going to throw to a clip of it already. <laughs> like, have they already started casting this thing? I know, that's so true. Because, yeah. Jan, I, I want to go back, because you opened the book with that last day and you're leaving the Rolling Stone offices. And I want to talk about your feelings there. But your first editor's letter, you said this. We have something here for the artists in the industry, for every person who believes in magic that can set you free. Mm. So take us back to Jan Winter 21, because you were fearless, you were quite bold, you were quite uh, tough, some people say, and a tad arrogant. What was your thinking back then? Tad arrogant. Mm -hmm. um, you were very confident. I, I, confident. I, love, I fell in love with rock and roll music uh, at a point when I was in college. I couldn't play it, but the idea of it so suffused me. I mean, I felt that thing, which has the, the, was the spoonful said, the magic that can set you free. Yeah. And there was something about that rhythm and that freedom of, and the joy of it that I just had to be a part of rock and roll. And so this is the way I was gonna do it. I could write about it. Yes. Didn't play it very well, sang it a lot. But uh, that's what the magazine was devoted towards, to bringing that message of freedom and vitality and, and, and within that human justice. Did you wanna be controversial? Because you had a lot of controversial things in your publication. No, Were you thinking that? I didn't set out to be controversial. I mean, it just happens. You uh -huh. know? And you discover quickly that, you know, well, that's great if you're in the news business, that's what you want. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a lot of the controversies are really great journalism that brought us along and got us our success by kind of breaking story after story, you know, and the, it was the good journalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. really fantastic. I mean, Tom Wolfe was one of the early writers. Hunter, uh, Hunter Thompson? S. Thompson. Yes. Annie Leibovitz came by as a photographer. I think right. she was an art student. She was an art student at 2021. Yeah. And, and then yeah. there's the the performers themselves, the, the the singers, the songwriters. They're also flocking to the magazine. They're writing letters of complaint when they don't think mm -hmm. the reviews are, are, are adequate. I mean, were you finding these people or were they finding you? A combination of both. People and musicians and the music business was shocked to see this publication that was covering rock and roll seriously, taking it, you know, certainly joyfully, but taking it like an adult, yeah. genuine, respectable art form that was. And when we came along, it was just teen magazines, you know, covering- Music beat. Uh, music beat, beat yeah. 16, over like that. Yeah. Or the trades, which were kind of, you know, re irrelevant, really. Uh, so people saw it and wanted to be, wanted to make it succeed, mm. wanted to help it get along, wanted to be a part of it. And, our early success is based in great part on the Beatles, on John Lennon particularly, wanting to send his stuff in the Rolling Stone and wanting to be in the periodical. Yeah. And it was with John that we rose, he wrote, helped us rise to success. Well, you had that very concrete cover way. where they were both nude and they didn't want to put it on the album cover. And right. you said, we'll put it on the cover of Rolling right. Stone. Then you sat down with John Lennon, then he got upset with you. you we did. had a little bit of a falling out a little. It's a bit of falling out. I did, when he was, when I was 25 and he was 28, I think, right now, we did the interview where he talked for the first time ever about what it was like to be in the Beatles and inside the Beatles. Before they'd been this kind of prepackaged, the four, yeah. Fab Four stuff. He let loose. And he let loose. And it was brilliant. And that got a lot, created a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I think that over the years he just decided that he shouldn't have, he used to start calling, instead of Lennon Remembers, he'd call it Lennon Regrets. Yeah. Mm. And anyway, he objected to my publishing as a book. I wanted to publish as a book. And I think it turns out that that book, that interview is a key piece of the history mm -hmm. of the Beatles. I mean, a really historic. And how do you toe that line between telling the truth, telling your truth, the magazine's truth, mm -hmm. and also balancing the relationship? Good question, yeah. <laughs> Very admittedly, I'm really good friends with a bunch of the people that we cover. As the pictures show, I mean, right. you're on how many boats and how many places? Yeah. With Big <laughs> Jagger in yeah. there? <laughs> yeah. Fishing with Mick. And I think the thing is, you have to understand two things. One is that these are people who are not 
making faulty cars or putting out cigarettes or they're not politicians. These people are, are doing good. They're making music and art. They're generally leaving happy. You know, they're, right, they're right. making the world a better place. So they don't need that kind of inspection, that kind of those rules that right. apply to public figures. The other, other thing is that in the end, if it's, if it's really, nobody ever asked for me to change their record view or another star or whatever. That just went without saying. But in the end, you've got to go with, as a journalist, the truth. Yeah. You know, as a publisher, yeah. I think that was the fundamental value of Rolling Stone to its readers, to me, and to the artists. Mm. Well, and the we... artists thought, thought they had something really special here. I think that should be protected. And, right. and integrity was one of those things. Can we talk about Gus Winner, your, your son, mm. 20, 28? Yeah. Who's now running? 32. 32, 32. Who's now running things? He, he certainly has that confidence and swagger that you had. You made it clear that you would sort of like to hang on, not hang on, but you would like to remain and do things. And you said Gus listened impatiently but respectfully. What's it like when you still want to be involved and your son is like, basically, no, Dad, I got this. You got it. Listen, Gus Hanlon was such TLC, and it was such an old bull in the china shop. And I so much <laughs> wanted to be still stuck in the closet giving advice. And Gus. Ease me out with real gentleness. I mean, really thoughtful. And I was just to tease him that, like, it was going to be like Tommy Boy in that movie. You know? <laughs> and he was, he was a champion. He was more than ready to take over. But he's, he's done a killing, great job. He's yeah. killing it, he's too. He's killing it. You talk about your health issues. Good Lord, Jan, what you've been through. I mean, you're throwing a ball with your son, Noah. You said, unasked to do so. You break your femur. That leads, you have a heart attack. Spinal fusions. Spinal fusions. You've been back to the heart factory. Torn right now. I mean, you had a lot of stuff. And you're, yeah. you're close with Bruce Springsteen and his wife, Patty Schialfa. I love all the Bruce stories. But you just mentioned to Bruce casually, you know, they say doctors perform better if they're listening to music in the operating room. Bruce and Patty show up at the hospital. They have a mixtape for to be played during your six-hour surgery. Right. Wow. Do How you remember? That? I know. I thought that was so cool. Do you remember any of the songs that were on it? Yeah. Well, I remember, first of all, this is going to get me good treatment from this doctor. Get this doctor is going to really <laughs> take care of me. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. The, I remember this. Well, there was Jackson Brown on it and Van Morrison, my favorites. A bunch of country stuff. This beautiful song in it called Night Shift uh -huh. by the Commodores, which, yeah. you know, yeah. is it, a little, it was about death. I mean, that was your. But just the but, fact that he took the time to do that yeah, for that you. That was Jan. just a knockout. Jan, real yeah. quick, best concert you've ever been to? Ah. The best was the one I produced, honestly, <laughs> no, modestly, <laughs> called the Rock, the, the, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 25th anniversary concert at Madison Square Garden, starring Bruce Bono. Mick Jagger, Stevie Wonder, Oof. Aretha Franklin. Oof. Uh, oh, man. Crosby Stills, Nash, Paul Simon, and Simon and Garfunkel. Wow. I mean, an incredible, two nights of four hours a night. It was just magic. amazing. I know one of those nights where I know I know you enjoyed going back in time, uh, the, the spirit of the times that you were able to capture. People reading this book will get that same feeling, that rush of happiness, that giddiness. It's there I, on the page. It is. I know we got to go. You say you're a 75 year old man, but you feel so young at heart. I do too. Six kids. You've had two spouses. One great spouse. You, all, both your spouses have been fantastic. Shout out to Matt now. Good weather, sun sparkles on the ocean, the dog sleeps at your feet. Life is pretty good for you, Life young is good. Weather. You're on your own, Buster Brown. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what your Thank mom you. used to say. Thank you. Fun read. Oh, I'm reading. Thank you, Jan Winter. <laughs> oh, great. To the be. book is called Like a Rolling Stone. It's on sale now wherever you like to buy your book.